Hey guys, what's up? It's Mick Guy. And today I'm going to be teaching you guys about the more blocks section in Scratch. So this is a um, quite difficult concept. It's actually not too bad, but it's basically going to revolutionize your way of coding. And it's going to change the way you make games or different things in Scratch and in any programming language in general. Basically, it's going to make it faster. It's going to make it lag. It's not going to make it lag anymore. It's going to uh, make the way you make games a lot faster. You're going to be able to make much more advanced games. Um, everything's just going to work a lot better. And that's because we're going to be using something called a function, which is something they recently introduced into Scratch. And the MIT team uh, did that, I don't know how many months ago, but it can't be too long ago. But anyways, so you guys have to understand the concept to actually use it. So I know in some of my other tutorials, copying and pasting works and doing what I do, or looking at the final result, looking at the code, and just doing that in your work. But in this tutorial, you guys are going to need to you guys are going to need to understand the concept of a function and what it does, how it works, so that you can make your games. All right. So first, let's take a look at functions in general. So a function, each function, has a unique input and an output. So let's say our uh, purpose for this function is going to be add to add two numbers together, right? By the way, this is sketch.io if you're wondering. But this is the point of our function. So as I said, a function has an input and an output, meaning it takes something in and it gives something out. So there's functions in everyday life. But let's use one. Um, so basically a calculator for addition. So it's going to add two numbers together. So it needs an input. Let's say we give it our first input is going to be 4. And our second one is actually going to be 6. So like I said, each input has an output. So as you could probably guess, the output for this one is going to be 10, right? So 4 plus 6 equals 10. So this is why this is a function. Now, like this, you could have subtraction, multiplication, or many things like that. But obviously, in Scratch, we're making a game. We're not making a calculator. Or we're going to make more advanced stuff. So essentially, I'm going to show you guys how to implement this concept into Scratch. So let's make a block called move. So this is exactly um, the first block that you need to pay attention to, and it's defining what move does. So we're going to right click this and we're going to press edit. So our move, it's going to take a direction, so we're just going to call this dir. Like I said, this is one of the input, and the second one is going to be called speed. So every function has an input and an output. So the two inputs in this is going to be the direction and, um, or we could just say the amount it needs to move, right? So these are both number inputs. I'll explain the rest later, but you're going to put in a number for this and number for this. So as we know, moving right, looking right is um, 90, left is negative 90. So what this is going to do is it's going to say point in direction and what is the direction our sprite is going to be pointing in when the function move is called or when it's used or when the block is used in a different um, code block. So it's going to be pointing in the direction that you give it, right? We made that one of the inputs that the user has to give. So we use this and we drag it right here. So it's going to point in direction of dir or direction. I don't know if that makes so much sense, but uh, you'll understand. So how many steps are we going to move amount steps right so every time we do this we're going to give it a direction and an amount and we're going to point in that direction and then we're going to move the amount of steps that's given to us so let's put it this way let's say when we want our game to start we want to go up 20 steps so all we do is we go into our more block section and this is the uh, block that we made pretty cool so what is up up is going to be zero that's the direction. So you can take a look at that. As you can see, point in direction up is actually going to be zero. And the amount, as I said, was 20. So it should look up and then move 10 steps, or 20 steps. It did that. Now you might not have seen that because it was so fast. So we can slow it down. We can say, wait one second, and then wait one second again. So it's going to be more gradual. So let's try it again. Um, first, let's um, 
pointed direction and go to zero zero. This is just something to test it out. So one flag is clicked. All right. So we started the game. One second and another second, and you can see that it happened again. Now let's do this again. You can see it's moving. Now it's not moving that much. It's only going to move um, 20. So let's say we want to give it 100. Now it should move a decent amount. So that's basically what a function does. So let's say we want to move this to negative 90. There we go. It worked. As you can see, it doesn't look that good because Scratch isn't a um, good interface for these kind of things. But you can tell that we can change the inputs and get a different output. So just like we can change the numbers here and get a different output, we can also change the direction and the amount of this move function and get different numbers. So let's create a simple program. Let's go to sensing and ask, uh, put a um, enter uh, direction, and the possible directions are going to be 0, comma 90, comma 180, comma negative 90. These are just uh, by memory, but 0 means look up, 90 right, 180 down, and negative 90 left, obviously. So then we're going to create a variable called um, direction. So we're going to say set direction to the answer. All right. And then what else we're going to do is we're going to say amount. We're going to create a new variable. So we're going to go into our sensing and ask the next question. How many steps do you want to move? So for example, we're going to do the same thing. Set amount to amount or answer. And then we're going to use our function that we made. And our function, what does it do? It points in a direction that we give it, and it moves that amount of steps. So we're going to use this, drag it there. And this is not putting um, the numbers that they entered. What's at, what we're actually going to do is, as you can tell here, the first number is going to be the direction. So we have to put the direction here. And the second input is going to be the amount. So the amount here. So let's see if this works. All right, let's enter a direction. Let's say I want to move to the right. So I enter 90. Now, how many steps do I want to move? I want to move a ton. So let's say 200. It's going to wait a second. It's going to point in that direction, and it's going to move. There we go. Very simple function, and it didn't take too much um, thinking, and it worked pretty smoothly. So as you can tell, functions are a different way of doing things. Now, the other way you could do it is you could do um, you could do it in this right here, if that makes any sense, but it would just take longer. So for this kind of function, obviously, it it's very simple function, so it doesn't save that much code and time, but it will when you get to more advanced things. So that's the uh, that's what a function means. So as I said, the thing you need to remember, and you'll learn this in math, Every function has an input and an output. So that's what you need to take away from these couple of minutes. All right, so let's explore, let's actually explore how Scratch uses functions a little bit more. So when we make a block, we can name it anything. So let's say we do, um, let's say we name it uh, something, okay? Obviously not too descriptive, but we're just gonna go through each one. So we're gonna add a number input, press this. We're gonna add a string input, press this. And we're gonna add a Boolean input, press this. And we're gonna add a label, press this. So these are four different types of inputs. Once again, every function has an input and an output, or multiple inputs or multiple outputs, right? So this is gonna have four inputs, as we can tell. And the first one is gonna be a number, the second one is going to be a string, meaning a text, um, a sentence, a word, a letter, anything do, having to do with um, letters and the alphabet, and um, or not even the alphabet, it could be numbers and different characters, obviously, but basically text. 
Here, a Boolean is some, uh, it's a type of data that's going to be true or false. So just like on tests, if you had an answer, um, if there was a question and you had to answer true or false, you would write one of those down. In this, when you're giving an input for the block, it's going to be true or false. Here is a label. So basically, the user can type whatever they want. All right, so let's experiment with this. So we can delete this. Oh, you got to remove this first and delete this. And let's edit this a bit. And we're just going to call it um, directions. So we're going to have the um, player choose what they want to do. So the first thing is going to be a number. So it's going to say, wait how many seconds they're going to input right so this number that we're getting they're going to wait that much the program is going to wait that much and then it's going to print out the string or the text and with the boolean so booleans are going to be zero and one but they basically mean true and false so zero is false and one is true so we can even just do say boolean so let's click the green flag well nothing's going to happen that's because we haven't used any time we're we haven't used this block at all there's no instances of this block so all we do is we can drag this out and we can say one flag is clicked we can use a directions so this is our block name directions we're going to say let's wait three seconds before we do the rest of the code let's print out something saying a function has an input and an output and the boolean is going to be touching uh let's say let's let's see what's going to be so we can use one of these operators greater than we're going to say if um the distance to mouse pointer so the distance from this to here is less than 100 pixels is greater than 100 pixels, then it's going to say 1. Otherwise, it's going to say 0. So let's see if this works. It's going to wait 3 seconds. It should say a function has an input and an output. And it's going to say true because it's more than 100 pixels away. As you can see, my mouse is right here. Now, what if we did it really close? So a function has an input and an output and true because when I click this it's taking the position of my mouse here so what we could do is we could say wait one second before we do this now let's say we bring it really close should wait three seconds it should say a function has an input and an output and should say false because it is so um, close so only if it's really far away is it gonna um, show true so this is basically what a function is, and this is how you can use um, these kind of things. So let's say we're making a game. So first, let me delete this. Let's delete the variables. Let's basically act like this is a new Scratch project. All right, so let's use our f uh, first example. And um, we're going to create a game where it's going to move. So. One flag is clicked, control forever, if. Now we can say if key right is pressed or key left is pressed. So duplicate this. So this is obviously um, not gonna save so much time because we are doing a really easy um, program or a game, really easy game and a very simple project. But once you get to stuff that involves 3D rendering, or advanced usage of clones, this is going to become very useful. So we're going to go into more blocks and we're going to make a block called move, just like we did the first time. Once again, very simple version of functions. So every function has an input and an output, but this doesn't have an input. So what we're going to do is we're going to click edit and we're going to add an input. So which one are we going to do? We're going to add a number input and we're going to use and that's going to be it so just click okay so 
in this function, all we're going to do is move the number amount of steps. So this little project is going to explain that we don't have to use everything in functions. We can use some things how we would usually do it and then some with our own blocks. So right, we're going to point in direction with this, but we're going to move the amount of steps with this. So here it's going to be, um, let's do 10 steps. And then we can just duplicate this here except change it to the left. So we're using some uh, blocks that we would usually use and we're using some blocks that we have made. So let's see if this works. Works perfectly. Obviously it turns upside down, but that's just because of scratch and our function works. Very smooth way to move your character. So this is just the basics of um, the more blocks section of scratch and a function. If you guys want a more in-depth uh, usage of these blocks let me know in the comments below but this is a new thing and a lot of people um don't really understand what it's for how it works so i just wanted to clear things up and i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial i know it's a little bit of a long one but it will clear up a lot of things in the future it'll make your games a lot better faster and just more advanced more complex and that's a good thing because you can add a lot more um elements to your game so not not complex as in it's it's hard to understand the code. In fact, it's going to be much easier to understand the code. More complex as in you can make your games a lot more intricate and complex. All right. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. And if you enjoyed the tutorial, leave a like and comment down below. See you guys next time. Peace out.